there viewers and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. That's our 2009 Jeep Wool Wrangler. I think it's got the big 3.8 in it. Uh, customer told me he's having some problems with misfiring and he's gone through, he's uh, done his plugs, done his wires, seemed to run fine uh, for a day. Light came back on, has misfire codes uh, evidently and is running rough again. Now uh, it has sat outside uh, overnight or maybe a day and a half now I guess at this point. Uh, I just started up bringing in, I did notice the money light is on, but it seemed to be running relatively smooth. I didn't let it warm up all the way because I figured we'd come in, we'll gather some data. I did power brake it a little bit. Engine seems to run smooth, didn't break up just under load in the bay here. So we'll grab a scan tool, we'll throw on it, we'll see what codes are in it, uh, see if it gives us some guidance, and then perhaps we'll have to warm it up to get it to you know, start running like poo again. Let's see what we have here. It just pulled the VIN out of it. So we'll go in here. I don't think we necessarily have to let it do a full system scan at this point. We'll skip right past it. And we will go right into the engine control module as soon as it loads up here. Let's see, where is that ECM? Right there. We'll see what the codes are. Because he told me it was misfires. And... 204 folks is not a misfire code that will make it misfire <laughs> but that is not a misfire code that is uh, a 304 v misfire code this is a fuel injection uh, fuel injector circuit code uh, so um, interesting all right well that's what we have to go with let's take and start it up here and I'll show you that it's not misfiring at this point not like you, you don't believe me or something, but I feel like I have to show you. Fire it up and you can see the lights on. But it sounds smooth. Hear that it sounds smooth when we rev it. No dropouts or glitches there. Pop her in the drive. So power braking it, still nice and smooth. Okay, I have an idea. That idea involves popping the hood. It is the big 3.8. Uh, where does this thing go? Uh, not there. Right there. What I'm wondering is if we have an injector perhaps at you know, when he did his plugs and wires, you know, he waited for the car to cool down, went through, did his plugs and wires, it ran fine. Uh, it ran fine probably that day until it got hot. And then the injector maybe, you know, puked when it was hot. That would make sense. Uh, what I don't want to do is touch stuff, aka touch the injector harness. Like, it'd be real tempting right now to find this injector, find where it lives, fiddle with the connector. Is it green? Is it pussy? What's happening? And then now all of a sudden it doesn't do it anymore. Now you're ding dong. So I'm wondering if how this is set up. Can we just can we monitor the current draw from the injectors? Uh, I don't know. That's what we're going to find out. Uh, being that we have an injector code, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Uh, just kind of thinking out loud here, they probably utilize the same power source. At least each bank probably does. So it's unlikely that it's losing power. Uh, some possibilities in my mind are. Uh, bad PCM, uh, you know, because we're going to have individual driver wires from the PCM to the injectors. So if that's open, um, you know, could be corroded, crappy power feed, corroded, crappy driver side, uh, anything like that, failed injector. But most likely, the most plausible thing in my mind on a Chrysler is any of the above. You know, bad wires, bad connection, bad injectors. So let's see if we can get to where we can look at it. See what it looks like. Does number four look different from any of the rest? Um, and then we'll just take it from there. That's enough talking about it. Let's do it. I think some days we get lucky, folks. So I looked to get us a diagram. So here is uh, all eight injectors. I am correct that they all get power from the same source, wherever, wherever this comes from. Comes down to a splice and then splices off all the powers. All the same color. They're brown with white. And as I mentioned, we have individual, you know, drivers for each injectors, you know, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
The good news is, is this right here, this connector that they go to, C102, that is the connector for all of the drivers. And C102 also houses this power for, you know, all six injectors. And then I've got the connector, you know, pin out here, which shows all of our injector controls. And then, uh, what is this? It's supposed to, I think it's pin one. Pin one, fused auto shutdown relay output, which runs all that, uh, which is fantastic. And I think even the better part, I got to do some investigating, but I believe this connector right here is C102, which will be even nicer because it's actually like right out in the wide open. This is a 20 pin connector and it is black. And I did see the harness does run down to the intake manifold. So we should be able to do our checks right from there. And I think the cool part will be is we can use it for a trigger also. We should be able to hopefully loop onto this wire with a current clamp, watch the injector or injector draw on all six and use one of them for a trigger because we know the firing order. So this is almost making it too easy. So here's what I'm thinking is I've got our current clamp down there. So that is the right connector. And awesomely enough, we can get right on it. So I'm super excited about that. Shut my phone off here for a second. Uh, I'm getting out a second lead and I was thinking that I was just gonna clamp right on to the number four injector for our trigger, but I think that may be a bad idea. Uh, simply because if that's the injector we're suspecting is failing and it's disappearing, but I don't think we wanna use that for our triggers. I'm gonna get a probe here and then I'm gonna get a ground. And then we'll just, for simplicity, we'll just find number one injector. So number one injector is supposed to be pin 12, brown with yellow. Make sure that's true on the connector pin out too. Pin 12, brown with yellow. So that is directly across from the one that we're in right now. Make sure that one is brown with yellow. And it appears so, so I'm gonna try. I wonder if we can just get this connector and get a screwdriver. Maybe we can just pop that right off there. <coughs> Yeah, there we go. That's helpful. Do that. We'll go right here, brown with yellow. Because if we know where number one is, we should, they should go in order, so we should know where number four is. Uh, I'll see if I can get this over on the battery. Negative, well, I guess right now we can just, we'll just clamp right here. Uh, we'll get the Pico fired up, hooked up. Well, it's fired up, we just gotta get everything, our, uh, everything set right, and we should be able to see voltage which is going to be pretty high now i did look this 4425 scope that we're using has a 200 volt max so we should not need an attenuator uh hopefully our scope doesn't go up in smoke because that would suck all right here we go folks uh let's see here we have our blue traits which is going to be our current clamp and then our red traits here we're going to need to jack that baby way up to 200 volts uh, we're going to put some time on the screen. And if all the stars and the moons align, let's jump this up to 5 amps. 2 amps should be plenty. But let's go ahead and start the engine. See if we got our current clamp backwards, as usual. All right, what do we have here, folks? Oh, let's see. We need to take away a little time. We're going to move our red trace. We're going to change our voltage scale on that to 100 volts. We're going to get a trigger on channel B. And let's see. We're going to move that baby over. We want to move her up. Whoa, Bella. And there, now we should be able to see everything that we need to see. So here's injector one firing and here's the current for it. Let's, let's get a little more detail here. Must be our scope leads are laying across some ignition wires. Uh, so we have cylinder one and then we're gonna have to find a firing order here. We probably should do that before something breaks. Uh, so potentially, you know, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, and then starts to pattern over. So I'm gonna let this run and warm up. We're gonna find out who is number four so we can keep an eye on it. I have a suspicion right now though that this is the number four injector. If you're seeing what I'm seeing. So uh, if you remember correctly, the code was for, what was the code for? It was code 204. Let me get the definition. Uh, it just says circuit open or high resistance. So what does high resistance do? Uh, remember, just you don't need to know Ohm's law, but you do need to know as resistance goes up, current goes down. These injectors are drawing, uh, how many amps are they drawing? 1.1 .1 amp, so a little over an amp, where this little guy is drawing less than that. It's drawing closer to an amp, 1.03 amps, we'll say. A little bit less, so if that had a little bit of resistance, it's gonna draw a little less. Uh, before we get all excited here, let's find out if, if that is number four. Let's find our firing order. So we're gonna go right into common specs. I think they have the firing order right in here under ignition. Uh, ignition, firing order, here we go. Probably could've just Googled this also. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, <laughs> we should have just guessed. So we are right. So one, two, three, number four. So number four is this little fella right here. Now all we gotta do is wait for it to die and see what happens. But we can tell right now there's something wrong with number four. For sure. <laughs> I'm gonna hop in here. The thermostat's just starting to open. When I was out there, I see all the steam coming off the radiator. So I closed the hood and I moved the computer over here so I can give it a little bit of throttle. And I can watch the screen and see if that injector is going to up and quit totally. Kind of had some funny business happening right now, don't we? Well, I better... I'm going to change the time basis on my score. I don't want to have something happen and miss it. Tell you what, folks, just looking at overall, so let's stand back, look at the big picture, you know, number four, number four, number four, 125 milliamps different than all the other injectors. I feel pretty confident. Well, the old Jeep does not want to communicate. No, it wants to communicate. It doesn't want to cooperate. So what we need to do, uh, is to gather a little bit, wow, that baby's hot. We need to gather a little bit of data here that we can from where we can without pulling the intake manifold, hopefully, uh, just to see what we can learn. Uh, so we know that we have extra resistance in the circuit and so on, we've already discovered that high resistance, low current. Right from this connector, what we need to do is see, is the resistance value from that connector to the injector? Is that, does that show us a problem? Uh, for example, when we check from the power source to the injector driver of a good injector, what is it? You know, is it, you know, 12 ohms or whatever it may be, which should be right around there because they draw about an amp. And then when we check number four, is the number four higher? If it is, great. We know our problem with resistance is from this connector to the injector. But if it is exactly the same, if let's say, for example, we check number one and number four and they're exactly the same, now you got a problem, lady, or I do, because the problem is not the injector. The problem is actually resistance in the circuit from this connector, you know, back to the PCM, which is right here. So that's what we need to do. And uh, I, think that's, I think that's a good a plan as any. But what the heck do I know? At least this way here we can call them with... Uh, a little bit of confidence and say here here's what we see we've spent our we've spent our hour on it or however whatever time we spent on it it's just about that and then we can say at this point you know we either a we need to pull the intake and test the injector independently or b we need more time i don't see any crusty dusty stuff in here this connector looks nice and clean we're going to go from our power source which is the number one pin so it's down here on the bottom and then 
we're gonna find where the number four, the bad one is, and we're gonna compare it to a good one. We're gonna compare it to the number one, which we know was good, because that's one we were using for our trigger, and that looked good. So let's grab a meter here. The malty kind. What's up, Mrs. O? Yeah, my yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't wanna hear about it. You're a crazy cat lady, Vanessa. You're the one who originally wanted it. I didn't want no cat. Yes, Not a did. cat guy. Yes, you are. You secretly are. Okay. You even love cat dogs. One and nine. So number nine. One and nine. Let's see. One and nine. So nine is brown. One and nine. Is that up here? One and nine. That is number nine is brown with tan. Okay, so we're going on this connector, brown and white, brown and tan. So that's the power feed and the number four injector. And, and the survey says it's auto ranging, nothing's happening. Why do we have no continuity between those two? We should. We don't. That doesn't make any stinking sense. Brown with white. That is, I'm on the right side of this harness, right? That should be the harness that goes into the intake, and it sure is. Why does that show open circuit? Let's pick an injector that actually works. Let's do number 10. So number one. It's going to make me look like a fool. Nope, it's not. Let's see, number one and number 10. Survey says, we're gonna guess around 12 ohms, but it is 15.2 ohms. And that is injector number three. Injector number one It's gonna be pin 10 and pin 12. And that is 14.7 ohms, 14.8, 14.9, 14.9 ohms. That one is 15.5, 14.8, And the frigged up part is the injector that we want to test, the number four injector, which is pin nine, brown with tan, which is this one up here. It shows it is open circuit. How the hell could that be open circuited because we just had the damn thing run it. And we could watch it draw current. <laughs> Did it just die in the time it took us to unplug this? Did it heat soak and up and quit altogether? Because we have nothing, folks. When I checked injector number four, they're diddly squat. So are you telling me when I plug this thing in, we got nothing now? Because that don't make sense in my, in my head. That's impossible. We can't have totally open. Of course, we got our stuff all taken off now anyways. Let's just start it. Skipping. Well, ain't that some hoopty hoop BS. Thing skipping like a whatever skips. Thing skipping like crazy now. Ain't that some crap. Go figure. We take our stuff off it, we shut it off for 0.2 seconds. Get on there. And here we are. Completely open circuit. Let me let me set you down for a second. And that's some cheese dog stuff. Number one. One, two, three. Something's missing. Five, six, one. Ay ay ay. All I ever wanted in my whole life was for a video to go the way I wanted it to go. Nice and using screen recorders and everybody's happy. Instead, all I do is lead you guys with disappointment in amateur videos. But that's okay. Never claim to be a Steven Spielberg. The good news is we know that from the computer up to here, we don't need to do any checks from here back to the computer because our high resistance is from here forward. 
So this little short section of wire to the intake manifold. So we have to pull the intake manifold now and go to the injector, which likely has failed uh, after it has gotten hot. But literally from the time we shut this thing off to come out here to unplug it was only a matter of a minute. And we sat there watching it for, well, at least I did for 20 minutes on the scope with the hood closed and it never died. It never varied. It never did nothing, but evidently shutting it off, it said, up yours, mother lover, and uh, decided to quit working. So at least we can call the customer now, give him the what's up. He might do his own work because he does some of his own work. And that works for me if he wants to. Uh, I don't care either way. I can call him with an extreme amount of confidence now and say, hey, fella, your injector is open circuited and or something in the harness from connector C20, whatever that was, to the injector connector, which is pretty unlikely, but still can't rule it out until we lift the intake, have a look, and you know, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, so that's that. Hope you guys liked the video. Why don't you go down there and hit that like button, comment, subscribe, do everything that you do. Find us on the Insta, find us on the Facebook, and just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.